Hey YouTube, this is Ace Pinkter. Today, I'm gonna talk about the Fruity Scratcher. We're gonna configure this thing to be played live or to get a real quality scratching session out of it. Okay, uh, the first thing we're gonna do before we touch anything, before, before you really do anything here, um, once you get a background beat, what you do is go into the, your audio settings here and adjust your buffer length to be as short as possible without generating any underruns. Now watch, I'm going to do this right here. Okay, see what just happened when I go below 30? I just caused about 50 underruns right there. Now, 40 is about as safe, it's about as fast as I can get without generating underruns, so I'm going to leave it right there. Okay, first, a word about the Scratcher, for those who aren't familiar with it. It's a turntable simulator. You have a vertical axis here on the vinyl here. You have a horizontal axis down here to play with. Which one you use is entirely up to you. Notice when I click on the vinyl, or down here, the hold light comes on. That indicates to the program that if it's playing in a direction, it will stop. And when you let go, it will resume. Okay. There's also a mute button down here which will disable the sound. That's very effective and we're going to use that to our advantage later. Turn the volume so that it won't overwhelm your beat. That's pretty good volume. The sensitivity down here is going to affect uh, how quickly it moves across the sample. I'm going to use less than 10% for this sample uh, because, uh, well, it just that just feels um, right. That gives me a good range to move without losing track of where I am. If I turn the sensitivity way up, it becomes almost impossible to control. And everything just kind of sounds like a high-pitched rattle. Now this is where I want it, right? About 7 or 8%. The acceleration knob is going to affect the dynamics of your turntable, whether you're trying to simulate an old belt-driven turntable, which takes a while to set up, to start up, or if you want to simulate uh, the more modern direct drive turntables, turn the acceleration all the way up. That will, that will boost it up to full speed almost immediately. And the speed right here is going to affect the pitch. It's basically uh, your, your adjustment knob on a turntable. How fast is this record spinning? So it will affect the pitch and the length of this sample. I'm going to leave that alone for now. Okay, one thing I always do when I'm setting up a scratcher is I give it a high pass filter and we're just going to cut out the bass at about 200 hertz or so. That's going to push our scratch a bit into the background. It's not going to drown out our mix. When it's when you're not when you're not doing a high pass, you'll probably pick up a lot of low end frequencies that'll that'll turn into just a muddy sound and it'll really drown out the other instruments. So I'm just going to leave it right there. And now we're ready to move on. Uh, some people will take this mute knob, a mute button, and assign it to an LFO. And the advantage of that is it does give you perfect rhythm to your, to your um, I guess, your trigger, because it will be in the quantization that's dictated by the LFO. I'm going to do this a little bit differently. I think this is a more intuitive way to do it. But it does require some setup. I'm going to create an envelope controller. You should be able to see this. Alright, notice it goes, it passes underneath my scratcher. That is because the scratcher is set to be detached. You can't see that option, but it's there when you click on the little menu. In the envelope controller, I'm going to give it a configuration that looks like this. It's a very fast envelope, so we want a very short attack, but not an absolute attack. We want a short release, almost the same length as the attack. This is a very fast envelope. And I'm going to link my mute knob, mute button, a button. I'm going to link that button to my envelope controller. Alright, that means when I click the button, the mute goes off. This will allow us to give some rhythm to our scratches, much the same way a DJ would flick the crossfader on a mixer. I'm going to close that. Envelope controller is here. Make sure that it's selected with the green light. And notice the configuration that I have up here. This is my, um, I think it's my recording panel, it's called. Um, since I have a beat, I don't need the metronome, but what I do need is this one right here, typing piano to piano keyboard. That allows me to use my keyboard, my computer keyboard, as a trigger. 
and when I press a key, for example, Z key, my mute goes off. It's triggering my envelope control. Now if you have a MIDI controller, you can use that. You probably get more of a range, more dynamics out of that. But uh, for those of you who don't, you can use this. Also, what I'm going to do is make sure that my loop record is off. That's going to be important in a few minutes, but not right now. So what this does for us is it allows me uh, to basically trigger when the sound comes through. Alright, so what that sounds like with a beat, you know, this is a bit too intense here, let me turn this down. You see how that could work. Alright, next step is the actual recording process. I'm in pattern mode right now, but I'm going to switch to song mode. And I'm going to show you a trick you might not be familiar with here. On the menu options in the playlist is a switch called Live Mode. What Live Mode does is it allows me to choose a number of patterns to play, and these patterns will repeat indefinitely. Even though it's, even though it's not lit up, even though I don't have any uh, pattern markers there, it continues to play. Now I don't want to record on my beat pattern. I'm going to use a separate pattern here. You can call this scratch or something like that. Okay. What we do here, since we got live mode here, we can record indefinitely. Uh, the only change I want to make here is I'm going to set this to be as small as possible. Um, pattern 3, 1 bar. <coughs> so now we're ready. I put it into record mode, press play. Whenever I'm ready, I can start scratching. Stop recording, you'll see that I now have a scratch track. Now this scratch track doesn't actually record, it doesn't have any real notes in it, but it did record my envelope control, and it did record the position of the turntable. So as we play along it, we can witness it's doing what it says it does, and I should be able to get just the scratches isolated. So what we can do with this is if I happen to like a certain a certain scratch, if I like the way it turned out, find one. That's a pretty good one. Uh, bar four, right here. So what I can do is I can actually just cut this out, and now I have this scratch right here, which just sounds like this. So I can repeat that if I want throughout my track, however I want to do it. Um, this is a pretty neat way to sort of record a few good scratches. Uh, the great thing about using it in live mode, like I said, you don't have to rearrange your whole song just to do a scratch session. But when you're done, you can sort, keep out the, you know, keep the good bits, and delete the rest. Whatever scratches you think sound good, keep them, chuck the rest. Okay. That is pretty much all I have for this tutorial. Uh, this is just my method of setting up the Fruity Scratcher. Uh, I get a lot out of it this way. I think uh, with some practice you can record quite a bit of quality material and um, it doesn't take long to get a good feeling for how to scratch with the Scratcher. Uh, one word of advice, if you have a laptop with a touchpad, use it. It will give you a much better feeling, a much better impression of where each sound is than using a mouse. Uh, the mice can be a, a bit you know, inaccurate and they lack the tactile response that real vinyl offers and touchpads about as close as you can get. This is Ace Binkter signing off.